Hello friends, welcome back to the new tutorial of the Nest.js. Today we are going to learn about the CRUD example with the MySQL and the type ORM. Those who haven't subscribed my channel yet, please do subscribe my channel. And if you like the video, please do like, share and comment on my video. So let's get started. So here we have the code base. So this is the source directory. Okay. Then we have the DTO file for the create user DTO, update user DTO. Then we have an entity that is user entity. Then we have a user controller, user module, user services. Then we have an app module, then app controller, then app services. Okay, so this is a structure of the CRUD operation that we are using the user for the user, right? So let's go by step by step. So first we create the DTO. So here you can see that we have created the DTO over here with the, we have to install the class validator if you haven't installed then please install the class validator npm package username is not empty is email is not empty and the password and should be eight characters is not empty full name and is not empty should be the age okay this is a validation file then while updating the user what is required and what is not required that is in the update user dot dto dot ts file okay next we have an entity user entity so this will create the database, sorry, table into your database. That name should be users. So it requires the ID, username, email, password, full name, and the age. Okay, so these are the para variables or the parameters that we require for creating the users. Okay, then in the user module, we have a, the user module, we have a user controllers. Okay. So let's go step by step. So this is from the nest.js common. We require get post body patch and the param and the delete because uh, for the for the you can see about the params like slash ID we required. So we require the param for that reason. OK, so the rest of that we are using the validation pipe that is common from that one and great create user DTO and update user DTO while creating the or updating the user. So we require this DTO. OK. Then user services where we have the logic for saving the data, getting the data, updating the data. So all the logic will come into the user service. Okay. So here we have the export. We have the routes that is users. Okay. The first one is get all users. Okay. Then we have a post add new user with the validation pipe data create user DTO. So here it is validate, validating the data. Okay, so if I click over over it, so this is, it sees that the is not empty username is email. So it validates the data before inserting into the DB. Okay, next we have a patch on the behalf of ID. We have to update the data. Okay, so update user, right? Then the last we have a delete one. Okay, so let's go step by step. Okay, so here we go with the first we will get the users. Okay, but we haven't created the users right now. So first we create the add new user. So go over here. This is our service file where we have the nest.js type ORM inject repository, then user DTO update user and user entity on the behalf of it. We have to create the user, right? So add new user first and um, here we go with this one. So we require username, email, password, full name and the age. Okay, so let's go and create the user for that one and then this dot repo because here in the pri in the constructor we have to inject the repository user entity private repo repository that is user entity we are using so with the help of this dot repo we have to create the user or save that one user okay so let's go to the postman and create the first one so here we go with this one Let's find out the routes. So npm run start. Okay, so the routes will come over here. That is API users would be our route. Okay, so let's go first one that is API users with the post method. Okay, so here we go with this one. Okay. And will be, which would be the post request, make a post request, go to the body, go to the raw and the JSON 
and here we will make a request over here so what we require it and you can we have to log in with the database also so localhost minor then true our password we need to add over here okay so this is the test db and here we have to create the users you can see that the table is automatically created when I have and when i have just restart the server okay so it is created let's create the users so what we require for this entity we require username so let's go and create the object with the username in the body so here we go with the username okay so put any of the username like rajni 90 okay next next field what we require that is email so we should add the email now email we require rajni 90 at the rate mailinator.com okay then we require password so add the password field also so password should be eight characters so make sure password should be eight characters okay then we require age so let's add the age also age is there then we require the full name also full name is there right in the db select this host. full name should be there right so make it full name like this okay and uh, here we add my full name Rajni Kant. okay this is added and this is done I suppose let's try to hit this one this is created with the ID this Let's go to the select data. One record is created. You can see. Okay, you can, if you want to make the ID should be primary, then you can make it primary also. Okay, so this is, you can say custom ID I have created for that one. Okay, so one record is added over here, right? So this is the, how to create that user is done. Let's go to the next step. This will create the user. Here you can see that. If I go my user entity, you can see the ID should be string and it is primary generated column with a UUID. Okay, so I'm using the UUID in the form of that it will create. If you want to avoid, you can replace with this one. You can primary auto generate the column. Okay, nothing much more on that. Move to the next one. Okay, so add new user is done. Get all users. So get all users will be what is the API endpoint would be. API slash users. Okay, so make a request. Make a one more request over here, Rashnikan 922 Melinator with the, this one and Rashnikan this. Send it. Now that is created. Make the get request and fetch the data. And here you can see two records has been added and two records has been fetched. And same records would be added over. Two records are added. Right? Here you can see that it's added. Okay, so this is the get request. So basically what we are trying to do, just finding this dot find. Find method will give you the, all of the list of the users, right? So get all users, just this dot repo, find will give you all the users list. Okay. Next one, add is done. Okay, next we have to update the user. Okay, so we require the ID to update that one. Okay, so update user DTO. So update user, what it require? Update ID, whatever data you want to send, you can send to update that one. Okay, but require the param as an ID. So make sure you have to pass this ID. Let's suppose I want to update the first one and I'm going to add this like this. Okay, let's check the endpoint would be API users ID and the patch request is there. So make it the patch request. Okay, patch request is there and body same one. Okay, so let's username would be I'm getting to add technical Rajni. 
okay and i'm going to update this one only let's and the rest of the data would be same as this okay i'm going to change the email address id rajni 44 and here i will add technical rajni right okay so let's try to send this patch method and let's go to the db it's updated or not so we have updated the record of which one 140 this is 140 right so let's technical regime should be updated over here you can see technical regime technical regime right so data is updated okay and uh, let's go to the next one here we require the param id and on the behalf of it we have updated the user then we have a delete okay we need to send the id again and make a request of the delete right and let's send it delete it and let's go and check only one record is there right so this is the full fledged cloud operation is done let's go to the configuration with the database which is missing still okay so this part is done then we go with the user module so we have to create the user module user entity user controller user service so type orm module we are for the feature we are using user entity right now then user controllers and the provider would be the user services that can be used anywhere okay after this we have to go with the app module.es so where we have the configuration file where we have to connect to the db okay so make sure nestjs type orm should be installed into your project right so here we require mysql currently i'm using the mysql if you are using if you are using the postgres then make it postgres okay so these are the credentials we have to use okay and then use the module we have to use type orm for the root orm options this is orm options we need to send for the connectivity controllers that is app controller provider would be app servers okay by doing this doing all of this you are able to connect to the type orm mysql and you are able to make the crud operation with mysql type orm and the nestjs okay any doubt any query in that just do let me know in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video have a great day